welcome to So Many Books. I'm your host, Tony Andrews, and today's guest is Sandra Martin, award-winning romance author of more than 70 novels and one of the best-known people in the romance world. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you, Tony. It's yeah. lovely to be here. It's, it's, I had to go look at your website and start counting books. I went to the books page. And is this right? 74 novels? Since 1985? I think it's actually 75. <laughs> okay, that's more than three books a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you a clone? Uh, no, no. <laughs> are there, are there just four? Me. Can yeah. I be you when just, I grow up? I, just was, me. I couldn't believe that. That's an incredibly prolific thing. Have you always written? Always. Um, I think I started writing literally when I was five. Prior to that, my mother told me that I made up stories, told them to her and she wrote them down for me. So it's, it's been a lifetime. Of course, the dream of the lifetime was to be a published author. Well, you've certainly achieved that. And actually, I was reading um, one of your books. Sandra's written a lot of these Harlequin Presents books, um, and I was reading one of them last night. It was very late, and I was very tired, and I'm like, I don't know if I can stay awake for this. I stayed awake for it. I loved Good. it. Good. Um, but I really wanted to read something that they said about you here at the beginning because I've been getting some letters and some emails from viewers thanking me for doing a show about popular fiction as opposed to literary fiction and I love you know the literary books I, I read American Book Award nominees mm -hmm. and Pulitzer Prize nominees but I also love novels that are designed to entertain and I love what you said about um, writing romance novels and it just I wanted to read this it said at last Sandra realized she wanted to write books about what all women hope to find love with that one special man love that's rich with fire and passion love that lasts forever and when I read that I'm like yes when people say why do people love romance novels this is why because we all want that I think that's absolutely true that that is what we all want Mm -hmm. And I, too, read literary works. Sure. I enjoy them. I learn from them. I mean, some of, my, some of the stuff you can pick up in books that are written by, by people like Elmore Leonard, whom I consider a literary writer as well as a popular writer, mm -hmm. um, is fascinating. But I think the truth is that life for most people is often difficult, sometimes dark, um, sometimes even depressing. And I think at the end of the day, there's nothing better than sitting down with a book that's going to take you away from all of that. And what better than a romance novel? What's your background? Well, how did you, you come to this? Well, as I say, I, I wrote as a, as a child. I mm -hmm. always kept a diary. I was the kind of annoying little kid who organized the other kids into a neighborhood newspaper that nobody wanted to write <laughs> except for me. Um, I grew up in New York City, mm -hmm. so there were lots of kids. And after a while, I think they learned to look away when they saw me approaching, you know, with a pencil and paper. Um, and then I, I did all the obvious things. I studied all the extra courses I could, um, AP courses in high school in terms of writing, English, journalism, mm -hmm. whatever. I went to college and majored in creative writing, minored in education. And, and the dream was always there. But I wrote, I wrote a lot of literary stuff, quote unquote. Um, these strange little poems that really I loved. I don't know that anyone else did. Um, novels that always had sad endings. Uh -huh. And at a certain point in my life, I decided that it was kind of a now or never thing. I was either going to do something or, or not. And as luck would have it, um, I met someone who wrote confessions have you ever read the Confession magazines? I'm sure you've yes, seen them. Yes, yes, okay. I have. I have seen them. Uh, and that, she told me that they were very tough to break into, but mm -hmm. that I, I thought, well, why not? Uh -huh. And I was very lucky. I sold the first story that wow. I wrote. And I continued doing that for, I guess, a year, maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. It was great experience, and it gave me some professional credentials. But what killed me was that people would write letters to the magazine, true confessions and true story. Mm -hmm. And 
and offer solace to <laughs> me, supposedly. You know, the, the stories are all written in the first person. Exactly, yes. They, people, people thought they were true, though. Absolutely. And, and, and it hurt me after a while, you know. That, and then I just decided to, well, it's a funny story. I'll tell it to you, and, and I'll make it a brief story. Um, I was at a doctor's office waiting as one waits uh -huh. for my appointment. I picked up a copy of Money Magazine. Mm -hmm. The cover read 25 ways to make a lot of money. And I opened it up and read the article and the 25th way was sell a romance novel. <laughs> and I said, I can do that in my, in my ignorance of how many other people were saying I can do that. And that's what led to this. But that's, that's interesting because that's how I started writing. Same I wasn't thing. reading a magazine, I was reading a self-help book. And it was called uh, Be What You Are, or Be What You Love. I don't remember the name of the book, but at the end of the first chapter, there was one of these little bullet point things, and yeah. it said, do you like your job? And I'm like, well, sure, I like my job. You know, I love my job. And the second one said, would you do it if they didn't pay you? And, and I yes, said, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love it that much. And the third one said, if money wasn't an object and you could not fail, what would you do? And I said, oh, well, I'd be a writer. And then the fourth one said, is there any reason you can't start now? <laughs> and I, I, and I, was, I joked that I was reading it in the bathroom. And I joked that I, my life changed one day when I was, you know, with- Sitting I, on I, John. <laughs> Yeah, I was 44 years old and decided on a new career with my underwear around my yeah. ankles. I wanted to ask you, and I hate this question, but everyone asks me this question, so I know the readers want to know from, from your standpoint, where do you get your I ideas? I knew that was the question. <laughs> I knew it. The um, writer's most hated question, where and, do you and get your ideas? And of course we hate the question because we don't think that there's any doubt as to where we get our ideas. Everywhere. But I guess civilians don't Everywhere. know. Everywhere. 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 I mean, don't you do what I do if you're sitting in a restaurant and there's some interesting conversation. Of, I take uh, notes. <laughs> I mean, you do. I have a How little notebook. How often? Well, and if you don't have one, I have written on tablecloths, you know, I have written on napkins, oh. and then you sneak the napkin out with you mm -hmm. because um, ideas, of course, are everywhere. So I, I, I think that what, what civilians, pardon the use of the word, what civilians find most fascinating mm -hmm. about writing is what we find the least difficult. Is what to write about. Right. I know. It's I said not a that problem. People say, um, oh, you need to talk to my cousin or my boss or my friend because she has an idea that you could make into a right. book. And I'm thinking, I've got file folders and computer files. That you'll never finish in a lifetime. And lists and lists of books uh -huh. that I'll never have the time to read. Yeah. And, I mean, to write, unless I'm you, of course, because you're writing more than three a year. Well, but, but these are these are relatively short. These are 55,000 words. Yes, I, I read, I, you're the one you're holding in your hand, The Sheik's Rebellious. Was the that last Rebellious, night? I read that last night, <laughs> and I stayed up and read it, and my cat couldn't understand why, you know, it's like, get off, leave me alone, Kitty, I'm trying to finish this book. I'm with it's the good, you know. I mean, yeah, the Sheik and I are hanging out, Kitty, uh -huh. you've got to go, you know. But I, I finished it last night. But that's... Now, the, you know, the Sheik is, is a very mysterious romantic character, and you've got the series that you, you had come out, the three in a row we had, mm -hmm. the Sheik's Rebellious Mistress, that was December, and then before that, in November, we had the Sheik's Wayward Wife, and then in October, the Sheik's Defi Defiant Bride. Right. And one of the things I noticed with, I didn't, unfortunately, have, but I'm going to take these now and read the other okay. two, but I read the third one was, you know, there were really exotic locations in this book and, mm -hmm. and they, have you actually been to these locations because you made them seem very, very detailed? I try not to write about a place that 